when he's ahead in the count. We welcome all of those of you joining us around the country here on Fox. It's Game 7 of the National League Championship Series. We're just underway. Juan Pierre on an 0-2 pitch, tripled down the right field line. He's at third with nobody out, and it's strike one to Luis Castillo. Castillo only 5 of 24 in the series with an RBI. Ramirez at third, Carroll's at first, tucked in, playing even with a bag in case Castillo tries to bunt. The middle infield conceding the run. Yeah. And two. Watch the location of the 0-2 pitch right down the middle. Sammy Sosa going to slip on the wet grass out there as he tries to adjust to get this ball. And Pierre can fly. 0-2 oh, to Castillo, and a roller foul. Kerry Wood, the number one strikeout pitcher in the major leagues this season, struck out 266 batters in 211 innings. We talked to Damian Miller about Kerry Wood, and he'll tell you that the key to Wood's success is his slider. If he's throwing his sliders for strikes and they're nasty, it makes his fastball that much better. But he's got to be able to throw the slider for a strike. Fly ball in a short left field. Alou charging hard. He's got it. And Pierre will stay put. One away. Let's take a look at the Florida Marlins batting order under their 72-year-old manager, Jack McKeon. It's brought to you by State Farm. Pierre Castillo have already come to the plate. Yvonne Rodriguez coming up. Miguel Cabrera in right, Derek Lee at first, and Mike Lowell at third. Latter third of Jeff Conine. Alex Gonzalez at shortstop. And 14-game winner, Mark Redman on the mound. What a great jump on that ball by Moises Alou on the ball that Castillo hit. He plays him shallow and the other way, much like the ball that he hit into the crowd in last night's ball game. But he knows Castillo cannot hit it over his head to left field. What a postseason it's been for Pudge Rodriguez. 15 RBIs during the postseason so far. First pitch breaking ball swung on a miss. Pudge Rodriguez of 15 RBIs tying a Marlin franchise record in the postseason with Moise Salou from 97. Nine runs batted in in this series. Ball bounces up there. Pierre started the count. And on the break. Whoa, what a great play by Damian Miller right there. That is a nasty slider in the dirt. He has to literally get up, move away, and then try to keep his body in front of that ball. Pierre had a great jump, but realized that he has the speed to be able to stop and get back to third. Hurry up. That is a tremendous block by Miller. to Pudge Rodriguez. Swing and a foul ball back. Perry got away with one there. Something's got to give in this at bat. Opponents against Kerry Wood this season with runners in scoring position hit 157. Lowest in the major leagues. Pudge Rodriguez in the postseason with runners in scoring position is hitting 533. After Kerry Wood threw that bad slider in the dirt and Miller blocked it, that's going to give him enough confidence to throw it out there again. Ran a fastball in on Rodriguez here. One ball, two strikes. Now, what do you throw here? Well, he's thinking in line with you, Pudge is, because he doubled up inside. The Cubs pitchers have done that a lot with doubling up. Doubling up is a lot of times in an 0-2 pitch you try to show him inside. He doubled up inside. Here's another one in. Pudge is actually looking away and he's fighting off the ball inside. And that third fastball in again was thrown because of that previous fastball being not in enough, but Pudge is still late on it. The only place that Pudge has really hurt the Cubs in this series are fastballs away. Throw the slider away off the plate. And you get the strikeout. One, two. Again, a breaking ball in the dirt. The Marlins have not scored in the opening inning in this series. 
The Cubs have outscored Florida in the first inning, 12-0. Gary Wood, we said basically a two-pitch pitcher, fastball slider, does have a curveball, doesn't throw it very often, has a lot more confidence in the slider. Ball in that almost hit Rodriguez. Three balls, two strikes. Well, he could go a couple couple ways here. And with Pierre at third, with one out, throwing a breaking ball down off the plate with aggressive hitter who wants the RBI isn't a bad pitch. And if it's a ball, you got the double play set up. Three two. Came with a breaking ball that stayed up and in on Rodriguez, and we'll do it again. Al, he's having trouble with location of that slider right now. He's throwing a few of them in the dirt when he didn't want to. He hung that one. So far, his slider is not breaking the way he wanted to, and we talked to Damian Miller about that. He's got to have a good, sharp breaking slider that he can control in order to be effective. Fastball in, and it's ball four to Pudge Rodriguez. Well, we had a wild game here last night, to say the least, and Steve Lyons for the Cubs. How important is it for them? Is it more important for them to get an early lead to shake off what happened here? Well, no question. They're the team that walks away worrying about last night's uh, result from the game. The Florida Marlins walk, will walk away all happy about it. they got to be able to get that game out of their mind, get ready to play this one. Al Leiter, you have pitched in a seventh game in the postseason of a 97 World Series. What do these guys have to think about doing to win for their respective club? Well, to not think exactly what you just said. He, they have to think about making pitches. And we've talked an awful lot about executing. And it's not only executing for the pitchers to execute pitches. It's the entire ball game. You look, saw last night with five outs to go. You have to play through 27 outs. Each and every player out here has to realize from the very first pitch to the 27th out, you have to execute. And right now, a perfect example of that. The leadoff triple by Juan Pierre. And he's still standing there with one away in the inning. Rodriguez now at first, and the 20-year-old Miguel Cabrera behind an account at 0-2. Interested to see what he does with Cabrera 0-2 through a fastball down the middle to Pierre 0-2. Another pitch in the dirt, and another beautiful block by Damian Miller. He's already saved that run at third a couple of times in this game already. Now this is such a tough job to do, too. Watch the ball bounce back towards Miller. That ball's running to your right as a catcher, but you know when it hits the dirt, it'll bounce back because of the spin of the slider. That's a pitch that no one will swing at. Kerry Wood has to throw that closer to the strike zone to get people to swing at that pitch. Foul of the third baseline. Pierre had to duck underneath it. Oh, <laughs> look out down there. Juan Pierre has had an eventful first couple outs of this ball game. Of course, that's why you take your lead off in foul territory. If the ball hits you, you are not out. In the air, deep left center field, and the 20-year-old Cabrera has given the Florida Marlins a 3-0 lead in the opening inning. An 0-2 pitch went for the triple. A 1-2 pitch goes for the home run. You can hear a pin drop in this stadium right now, Tom. 20 years old. Started the season in double-A. Where's the location of the pitch? He wanted it up. That was down around his ankles, and he golfed it out of here. wasn't that bad a pitch it was not where Miller wanted it but that thing was off his shoe tops when he hit it out of here sometimes we pitchers are players in general don't like to give credit 
and that was a good pitch. Whatever you're trying to do, that's an ankle-high fastball on the inner third of the plate. And he golfs it out. We've been talking an awful lot about Cabrera. This guy is going to be special. He is some kind of player. They didn't call him up until June, his very first game. He hit a walk-off home run in a Florida Marlins win. And here in the first inning, Game 7 of the League Championship Series, Cabrera with a three-run blast to left center field. Ball one to Derek Lee. You saw the note, 20 home runs. A new league championship series record. Cabrera probably just young enough to not realize the magnitude of the situation that he's in. He's just out there having fun. Started the season in double A. Had no idea he'd be playing in the National League Championship Series. One and two to Derek Lee. Ozzy Guillen says that he is the type of player, especially when he fills out a little bit. He's a long, lanky kid right now. He says he reminds him or thinks he can be very similar offensively to Manny Ramirez. Lee Goff swinging on the slider down and away. First strikeout for Wood, two gone. Prior to this year, seven league championship series had gone to a game seven, with the home team winning five of the seven games. However, the momentum in this series clearly has swung to the Marlins, who are trying to come back from a three games to one deficit. Four LCS teams prior to this year fought back from 3-1 down to force a game seven. And three of the four teams won game seven, which is what the Marlins are trying to do here tonight. Last accomplished by the Atlanta Braves in 1996. Well, those statistics are all great, but I guarantee those guys on the field, Cubs that is, they're not thinking of the stuff, especially the, at least the negative thoughts. Still got to get back into it and execute and play small ball and do the things you need to do to get back into this game. One of the interesting things about this ball game today is that Jerry Crawford, the home plate umpire, is known as a hitter's umpire. Already talked about Mark Redman and what he has to do. He does not throw the ball hard. He moves the ball in and out. Needs to be able to expand the strike zone. Not going to be able to do that with Crawford behind the plate. 2-1 to Lowell. Slider swung on a miss. Two balls, two strikes. In 32 starts during the regular season, Kerry Wood allowed nine runs in the first inning all year. third home run of this league championship series his third home run overall in the playoffs got off to the terrible start 0 for 9 to begin the division series has been wearing it out ever since 3 and 2 we're talking about getting into the whole psyche here this isn't just a one run lead it's a three run lead and the whole thing about what the Cubs are dealing with and having been up 3 to 1 and now having to go to a game 7 and the Marlins having this whole why are we here and why should we play and all the stuff Jack McKean's saying this is absolutely going to relax these guys even more. Swing and a miss by Lowell. But the crowd at Wrigley Field stunned in the opening inning on a three-run homer by Miguel Cabrera. Miguel Cabrera, three-run home run in the top of the first. Now Dusty Baker's team comes to bat in the home half of the inning. His lineup presented by State Farm. Kenny Lofton in center, Mark Rezolanik at second, Sammy Sosa in right, Moise Salou in left, Aramis Ramirez in third, Eric Carros at first, the latter third of Alex Gonzalez, Damian Miller, and Kerry Wood against 14-game winner, Mark Redmond. Redmond getting his third postseason start. He's yet to win a game, but has pitched very, very well. Well, you know what he's going to do from his first game in this series? Away, away, away. Occasionally bust you in. Lots of change-ups and curveballs. And he doesn't mind pitching behind in the count. He generally is behind in the count. He's a nibbler. Quickly 0-2 to Lofton, who's had a fabulous series. Ten hits and 27 at-bats has scored eight runs. Fouled away, and it remains nothing at two.
Talked about the Cubs in the opening inning. 12 runs they have scored so far in the first frame in this series. And Lofton a big reason why. There has to be someone on that Cubs bench, a leader, that can talk to this Cubs team about staying within themselves right here and not trying to do too much too soon. A three-run deficit can lead you right into what Mark Redman wants you to do as a hitter. Get you over anxious and get you to start thinking about pulling the ball to try to hit it out of the park. That will kill the Cubs if they're thinking that way. Two and two to Lofton. Lofton a solid series in the division series against Atlanta. But we mentioned he has been sensational here in the LCS. and now he's run the count full. Sometimes you look at the way Mark Redmond pitches, and we saw a brilliant effort out of him. It's like he doesn't want to throw a strike. Bounce to the right side. Castillo is sure-handed as there is in the National League. Throws out Kenny Lofton. It is just a beautiful autumn night. 57 degrees. The wind was blowing out. About 15 miles per hour during batting practice. Balls were flying out of here on the Waveland and Sheffield Avenues, but pretty quiet right now. A little bit of wind to speak of blowing out towards right field. Anything hit low like Cabrera hit is going to go, blowing in or blowing out. You know, getting back to what you said, Steve, about it, it looks like he doesn't want to throw strikes. You know, there's different types of pitchers, but if you have a fastball that's below what's considered below average, and Redmond has that, you have to pitch, and you can't get away with as many mistakes. And mistakes are balls that are out over the plate. If you throw 93 or a better, as a result of that velocity, you get away with mistakes. So he has to hit the corners, and therefore it looks like he's nibbling. guy like Kerry Wood will get hitters to swing at bad pitches. A guy like Mark Redman wants a lot of his pitches to be called strikes or get them to chase pitches out of the strike zone. Base hit in the left field by Mark Rezalano. more people out there than there were at Woodstock. <laughs> more people right. out there than there are in here. Is that it's a, amazing. Is that a Kerry Woodstock? Ooh. How about that? Now Sammy Sosa. And there is strike. Sammy the first eight games of his career in the postseason without a home run only one run batted in and here during the LCS a pair of home runs six batted in swung the bat very very well not looking to hammer everything into left field Steve you talked about it last night going the other way after he got down a couple of strikes well when Sammy became a really really good hitter was four or five seasons ago when he learned to hit the ball the other way he used to be dead pull not that he didn't have to pop to go the other way it took him a while to learn when he started driving the ball into the opposite field gap and saw the balls go out of the park, the light went off and said, now I can do that. 2-1. The other way in the right field, Cabrera. Over to get it. Well, you just can't say enough about Miguel Cabrera. Talked a little bit about him already. He's already hit the home run of the game. But for those of you that have not been with us through this series, this young man came up through their system as a shortstop. He moved over to third base in the minor leagues this year. Two days before they brought him to the big leagues, they said, get out in the left field and do the best you can because that's where you're going to play when we bring you up. They did that, and then Mike Lowell went down after getting hit with a pitch, which broke his hand. Cabrera came back into third. And in this series, he is playing right field for the first time ever. 
ball one to Moise Salou. I mean, there are a lot of times you don't ask a veteran player to do that. And they're asking a kid who just turned 20 to do it. Yeah, isn't that the way the games change? You can ask a young kid to do it. You can ask a veteran to do it. Two and zero on a loop. They had the conversation with Jeff Conine about that very thing. Conine said, "I do feel better in left field." When they wanted to get Lowell back into the lineup at third, so they said, "Cabrera, you'll play right." Fly ball, pretty well hit, right center field. Cabrera going back to the wall, and that'll end the inning. One hit, one left, one inning. Down here at game seven. Marlins lead, three nothing. Against Kerry Wood here in the top half of the second inning. And Jeff Conine looks at a strike. Juan Pierre led off the game with a triple. A one-out walk to Ivan Rodriguez. And then Miguel Cabrera hit his third home run in this LCS. Which, by the way, is a league championship series record for home runs by a rookie. Cabrera with three of them. Two to Conine and fouled out of play. The fastball inside. I was I was actually thinking the second pitch was a curveball. He's been throwing a lot of fastball sliders. This crowd was jumping, and Dusty Baker has talked a great deal about the importance of his team getting the crowd and keeping the crowd into the game. They are very quiet right now. A rocket that would knock down, reaching behind it. It goes to Miller, who throws it into right field. We saw Kerry Wood make that exact same play during the division series. Took a shot at it again, but it hit off the glove and rolled into foul territory. Yeah, but that ball bounced, Tommy. This one didn't, did it? That's a line drive right back at Wood. He almost goes behind his back. And then look, Miller. Miller reacts to it. This was almost one of the most amazing plays you'll ever see. He comes up there, bare hands it. Wow. <laughs> Just going behind my back. Shaken up after banging his knee or his shin into the bag. There you see the hole in the pants right around the knee area. Conan, I think, was just trying to avoid some type of collision down there with Eric Carroll's. See when the throw's coming in, Carroll's leaning back in towards Jeff Conine to try to make a play. And Conine, you know, really did a nice job of avoiding a maybe a very serious collision between the two. During the division series, this was a one hopper that Wood reached out and got. The one hopper behind the back, Ole, throw him out. Game cannot be that easy. And then the line drive off the bat of Conine, he tries to do the same thing, which is, you know, he is not hot dogging at all. He's doing whatever he can to get his glove on the ball, and he falls so violently off to the left side of the mound, it's easier for him to reach back that way. The only guy I can remember that made that play with any kind of regularity, if there is such a thing for that kind of play, was the MVP of the 1990 World Series, Jose Rijo. That's all reaction right there. Now Alex Gonzalez. Fly ball straight away center field. Lofton has room. One away.
It is hard to believe that we are in the same venue just based on how quiet it was or is now as opposed to when this game got started about 25 minutes ago. Mark Redman is not a good bunner. And with Jeff's knee or whatever's going on with him there, this is definitely an opportunity to double up here. And it into the air, and Damian Miller's got it. Too late. Let's take a look at our Sprint Virtual Manager question tonight. Very simply, can the Cubs rebound tonight? To answer the question, use your PCS Vision phone from Sprint or log on to FoxSports.com, keyword MLB on Fox. I think those Cup fans will be getting on there to vote. <laughs> if you had to make a prediction here, Psycho, what would you say the yes to no ratio will be on this question? I'm going to say something like 82% Cubs fans saying yes, <laughs> yeah, they can. All right. <laughs> Rebound. We'll see how it turns out. But you know there's some Marlin fans out there saying, uh-uh. They'll vote, too. Juan Pierre led off the game on an 0-2 pitch with a triple down the right field line. High and away, two balls and no strikes. It's a pretty simple formula and easy formula. If Pierre and Castillo are getting on base, the Marlins are winning games. That was a story during the regular season. And man, has it been the story here in the postseason. Gonzalez and that'll end the inning. One hit, one left. We played an inning and a half. Three nothing Marlins. Always have to be Subway E Fresh by Radio Shack, official sponsor of Major League Baseball. By Chevy Silverado, it's the right truck. And by America Online, look for 9.0 Optimize coming this fall. A beautiful fall night in Chicago and the Marlins in front game seven of this league championship series three nothing on a three run home run by Miguel Cabrera boy we recognize that seat don't we that's very close to the same seat that we made famous in last night's ball game with a foul ball hit down the line with an out in the eighth inning this is last night's ball game with Castillo hitting the ball going into the crowd and Steve Bartman I tell you what he's taking a lot of heat but this guy this guy this guy took so much heat for trying to catch that ball how many other people are trying to catch the ball look at the gloves look at the hands look at this guy reaching this guy's reaching every one of those people would have done the exact same thing as Steve Bartman did and they're feeling very lucky that their hand did not touch the ball or else they'd have news helicopters circling around their homes tonight as well. It's a very, very sad, sad story. And truly an indictment in so many ways of the society that we live in today. That young man could not go to work today. There were television stations, radio stations hanging out in front of his house once it was revealed what his name was. Very, very sad. Rounded foul of the third baseman. All the people out there that have said that they would have let the ball drop or they would not try to catch it are hypocrites. Everyone would have tried to catch it. Here's a statement from the lifelong Cub fan. I had my eyes glued on the approaching ball the entire time and was so caught up in the moment I didn't even see a loop, much less that he may have had a play. And I thought for one second the ball was playable and had seen him approaching, I would have done whatever I could to get out of the way. Certainly we are thinking about him tonight and quite honestly continue to hope and pray for nothing but good things for him and hope somebody doesn't get so far carried away with being upset about what happened that they would think about doing anything harmful to that young man. Popped up to the right side. Let's go downstairs and welcome in Josh Lewin. Hey, Tom, and just to echo what you were talking about, Mr. Bartman had his phone disconnected by 8 a.m. this morning. And credit should go to the security staff led by Mike Hill here at Wrigley Field last night. They did a wonderful job 
shielding the young man on his way out of here, protected him. And it was a pretty unruly scene, as you guys are well aware, last night. Josh, thank you very much. Great to have you with us during this league championship series. One away in the inning, and Eric Caros, the battery, looks at a strike. Caros, 2 of 10 in the series. There is one way that Mr. Bartman will be let off the hook, and that is if the Cubs win this game seven. You'll see that kid on the Jay Leno show. Letterman. Shot in the right field, a base hit by Carroll. The one guy in the lineup that gets it more than anybody else as far as taking Redmond the other way. Let the ball get deep into the strike zone and then shoot it into right field. Been doing that in the entire series. Castillo has robbed him of a couple base hits by his positioning over there. He almost got to that one. One on, one out, and Alex Gonzalez digging in. A swing and a miss, 0 and 1. Gonzalez, 7 of 24 in the series, has three home runs. Well, if any team would realize how quickly a 3-0 lead can evaporate, it would be the Chicago Cubs. They saw it front and center in the eighth inning here last night. They trailed by three tonight, but we're only in the last of the second inning. One and two on Gonzalez. Get back to Carlos. I, I agree with you, Steve. He he batted. He actually had the best batting average against left-handers, and it usually goes hand in hand throughout the league. And lefties like to pitch away. He batted 366 against lefties. In the air, right center field. Pierre on the run, and it's up against the Ivy. On his way to third, Carlos. They're going to hold him there on a double by Alex Gonzalez. Pierre was covering so much ground out there. I think Eric Carroll did a great job of rounding second. But then Pierre almost put on a burst of speed like he was going to catch it. That ball away, hit the ball the other way. That's got to be the formula for the Cubs if they want to do damage. Pierre almost got to that ball. Watch him go around. Then he stops because it almost looked like Pierre was going to get to it. That made him have to stop at third base. It's a big at bat right here for Damian Miller and the Cubs. Runners at second and third, only one out in the inning, and Miller down a strike. Florida playing the infield back, conceding the run. And it's 0-2. So this is where Damian has to realize with Wood on deck, he's not going to get anything to hit. And obviously what Redmond's going to do is just feed off his aggressiveness. He threw two change-ups out of the zone, and he's 0-2. And it looked like on both swings, especially the first pitch, Al, Damian Miller was trying to pull the ball. You really have to shorten down and protect. Miller laid off that one down and away. One ball and two strikes. Miller only two of eight in the series, just three of 19 in the postseason. side will bring in a run or will throw out Miller. It's a 3-1 ball game. Carroll scoring and Gonzalez advances to third. Now Kerry Wood, a very good hitting pitcher. Went 10 for 61 during the season. Hit a couple of home runs. And in game one of the division series, Wood with the big two-run double. Off Russ Ortiz. Out of play. Now, Damian Miller did a nice job of adjusting after going down 0 2. 
thought about what was going on up there with an open base and then made sure he put the ball in play to get the run home. Kerry Wood. And again, fouled out of play first base side. Redmond ahead at one ball and two strikes. Talked a great deal about these cup pitchers. They swing the bat. Wood, Pryor, Zambrano. Wood got a good pitch to hit out over the plate right there and fouled it back. Boy, if he was a number five hitter in the lineup, he'd look at that pitch and say, he got away with a mistake right there. That ball up a little bit, but doesn't have a whole lot on it. You remember. Redmond's fastball is four to six miles an hour slower then Josh Beckett's changeup. Beckett's changeup at about 90. Redmond's fastball right around 84, 85. Three and two to Wood. It's a great at bat for Woody. Even if he doesn't get a hit, he's up to 43, 44 pitches. As the pitcher up there, you want to make the opposing pitcher throw more pitches. Kenny Lofton did a great thing right there by stepping back out. We're going to watch Kerry Wood hammer this pitch right down Broadway. Talk about a pitcher helping himself out. He knew it was gone as soon as he hit it. Lofton stepped in the box and then stepped back out to make sure that the crowd kept cheering. The best thing that the Cubs can do right now is get this crowd back into it. the first home run by a pitcher in league championship series play since they went to a best of seven LCS. The last was by Cub pitcher Rick Sutcliffe in 1984. to the Lofton. We'll do it again. I think it's safe to say the crowd is back in it. The key is still going to be whether or not Wood can come out and control his slider. Because if he can't, he's not going to be leading this game. He's not going to be able to stay in this game like he is right now at 3-3. to Lofton. Wayne 
Dean Rosenthal on the phone of the Marlin bullpen, and that'll end the inning. But the Cubs tie the game, and Kerry Wood, who had two home runs during the regular season, gets his first of the postseason. Presented without commercial interruption by the next Ford F-150. Marlins got three runs in the top of the first. The Cubs answer with three in the bottom of the second. Here we go in the third, game seven of this National League Championship Series. After hitting that home run, there's Kerry Wood's first warm-up pitch. Airmailed it to the backstop. One and one to Luis Castillo. Jack McKeon told us, as did Dusty Baker, all hands on deck except for last night's starting pitchers. Mark Pryor, the Cubs, Carl Pavano, the Marlins, and already activity in the Florida bullpen. Carl Pavano started in place of Brad Penny last night. Penny beginning to throw. Usually in a game like this, when everybody should be available, you ask who's available in the pen. More times than not, you'll get the answer, Johnny Holstaff. That means everybody. Round ball up the middle, Gonzalez is there. And it's rolling time to get Castillo. Carlos Zambrano available in the Chicago bullpen tonight. As is Matt Clement. Well, Woody's two and a third into it. He's 52 pitches. That's not good. He wants to go deep. 33 pitches in the first inning. He's got to get a couple quick outs if he wants to go deep into this game. Rodriguez walked and scored on the Cabrera home run in the first inning. Breaking ball in their strength. Rodriguez has a hit in every game of the postseason. I like that. That's what we've talked about before. Run him in off the plate. Show him in. Get him out away. The guy that likes the ball away, you've got to be able to get in that kitchen a little bit, and then something off the plate away to get him out. To get where you were saying about Redmond having to nibble and hit the corners, there, there's a fast play. Tried to get inside, and he left it in middle. Pudge missing and fouling straight back. But when you throw 95 or better, you get away with mistakes. And Redmond could not get away with that same type of mistake with Wood at the plate. Slider away, and it's two and two on Yvonne Rodriguez. In baseball jargon, they call it missing bats. And that's what power pitchers can do, even with mistakes. Miss bats. Wood is getting closer with the location of the slider that he wants. That was better. And that's the difference, too, Al. That's what you're talking about right there. There are two pitches. Two of the last three pitches that he's thrown are the pitches that Rodriguez has been hammering this all the whole series. But because Wood throws at mid-90s, he's sneaking it past him. That's the pitch that's been having the Cubs get hurt with Rodriguez this whole series. Fastball, outer half. He fouled both of them off. But a good at bat here by Rodriguez. That fastball ran in on him at 94. He was able to muscle it out of play and will do it again at 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, you hear the expression of doubling up. A lot of times you show in. He doubled up twice in his first at bat and doubled up there, usually setting up for the slider away. There it was. And Rodriguez going on strikes. Third of the game for Kerry Wood. Game seven in the NLCS tonight. Tomorrow, baseball's postseason continues at 8 p.m. Eastern. 
five Pacific with a decisive game seven of the American League Championship Series. How about the matchup there? Pedro Martinez, Roger Clemens with a trip to the World Series on the line from the Bronx. Sports biggest month of the year continues tomorrow only on Fox. Now Miguel Cabrera down a strike. He fell behind. One ball and two strikes to carry Wood his first at bat. And then launched a missile to the seats in left center field for a three run home run. And it was a missile Tommy golfed this ball off his shoe tops. Pudge knew it was gone as soon as he hit it. Well, I just like the attitude of this kid. Very quiet, does his job, plays hard. Breaking ball, strike three call. A one, two, three, third for Kerry Wood. Sosa and company will back in a 3-3 game. Cubs bat last to the third inning in a 3-3 game. It'll be Mark Resolonic, Sammy Sosa, and Moise Salou against Mark Redmond. Resolonic singled in the left field his first time up. One and one. The fan who caught the Terry Wood home run ball. Later with the rally cap on already. I love that. He got the rally cap on and Wood took him deep. Second inning. There's no tomorrow. He's <laughs> happy to have it. Sammy flied out to Cabrera in right field in the first inning. Sammy going the other way, deep to right. Moises Alou going the other way. Gonzalez the other way for a, a double. Pretty good game plan against Mark Redmond. Keep the ball in the middle of the field into the opposite field gap. Redmond has shown of all the Cub right-handed batters, the one with the greatest amount of frequency he has come in on in his two starts in this series is Sammy Sosa. They're doubling up. Two and one. Go ahead and show inside as long as you miss inside. Not necessarily trying to throw a strike in there as Al has talked a lot about setting a guy up throwing in there. You don't want to throw a strike so that you can get him out or throw a strike on the next pitch. That was the pitch he struck Sosa out with in game three. It's a curveball, slow, 71 miles an hour, much slower. Sammy just swinging out of his shoes. He's coming down and into him. Tom, the reason why he's coming in, because Sammy's notoriously been a guy who guys, likes to go to right center. As you see there, it dives out over. Yeah, it was up and in a little. But a lot of his home runs go to right center. This is just good call. Yeah. We've seen some stairs. Sammy did it. We've seen it in the other league championship series, but we've said it a lot. If you can't pitch in there, you're not going to win. You have to be able to keep a hitter honest up there. You, you'll get your brains beat in as a pitcher if you just try to stay away all day long or try to trick guys. have to be able to get in there and get the guy off the plate. Redman fell down. He lost his footing as that ball came out of his hand. And Sosa reaches with one out here in the third. hit the pros presented by Chevy Silverado and face real pitches from today's best hurlers. Log on to FoxSports.com. Keyword games. Chevy Silverado. It's the right truck. Brad Penny jumping up and getting ready to get loose. Lou hit the ball very hard, as Steve mentioned a moment ago, in the right center field his first time up, which ended the opening inning. Ball one, low and away. 
Moises Alou is a guy that can think into the opposite field, stay there, and if he gets fooled, he has the hand quickness and the power to pull a ball that's up in the strike zone out of the ballpark to left field. Pulls it into left field. Looking up Kona. Cubs lead by two. exactly what we're talking about thinking the other way but a ball up in the strike zone a hanger looked like a breaking pitch to me thinking opposite field but getting fooled just a little and pulling the ball to left field for a home run serious strength tremendous bat speed from Moises Alou Ramirez drives it the other way and Cabrera has to go in the air to get it Strike one to Eric Carroll's. Boyce just got a change up out over the plate. We've been talking about how quick his hands are. Change up up out over is not good for a fastball hitter. Talking to Gary Matthews before the game, he said the biggest thing that we have to do is stay off the stuff that's soft and away and down in the zone. We've got to get the ball up in the zone if we're going to have any success against Redmond. And that's what Alou did. Got the change up, but he got one that was up. If you're thinking as a hitter about pulling that pitch, you ground out to the third baseman. If you're thinking up the middle, you get fooled just a little bit. You stay on it enough to pull it with authority. Fly ball, short left center field. Pierre is there, and that'll end the inning. Well, the Cubs have taken their first lead of the game. The former Marlins. Moise Salou with a two-run blast. Owns in retirement, AIG, we know money. And by UPS, what can Brown do for you? Game seven of this National League Championship Series from Wrigley Field in Chicago. Glad to have you with us. The Marlins jumped out in front, 3-0 in the opening inning. But the Cubs have stormed back an RBI ground out by Damian Miller. Two-run home run by the pitcher, Kerry Wood. And then a two-run homer by Alou. Lee is shattered back, grounds out to Montana. There's the fan that caught Moises Alou's home run ball, getting dragged out of there so he can not only hang on to the ball, but his life as well. Santa Claus was out there too. Oh, and one to Mike Lowell. Only eight times in postseason history has a team won a series after trailing three games to two. And one game six and seven on the road. Which is, of course, what the Florida Marlins are trying to do here. It's happened six times in the World Series, once in the ALCS, and only once in the NLCS. It was 1991, then the Braves did it over the Pirates. Kerry Wood trying. There's a curveball, and, and his first start against this Marlin team, he didn't throw any curveballs. He's throwing a few now. Ramirez backs up on it. 
Pachula. Kerry Wood is trying to become the greatest winning percentage pitcher of any Cub pitcher in postseason history. Three finger Browns, 2 0 in 1908. Your favorite, Tom, Orville overall. Yep. 2 0 in 1908. My guy. Your guy. And Kerry Wood, 2-0 at 2003, looking to up that percentage and be the best ever in postseason history for a Cub. Orville overall, the original Big O, before Oscar Robertson came along out of Indianapolis. That's just a hard name to say. Yes, it is. retired eight batters in a row and that one chopped foul two balls and a strike on Conan talk about a tall order for these Marlins trying to be prior and wood back to back that has not happened all year long either in the regular season or the postseason the Cubs 22 and 8 when they have started back to back games this year including the playoff time prior and Woods have pitched in back-to-back -back games and the Cubs lost both games came in June of last season against the White Sox Ball for to Conan, good at bat by the Marlin left fielder and Wood let that at bat get away from him well he got back into the count he went 2-0 and then threw a couple strikes Jeff threw up fought off a fastball with two outs going down the bottom of the order, definitely that's, that's not what you want to do, obviously, but two out walks aren't, aren't a good thing. Now in this lineup, he's not too worried about walking Conai. When you have Gonzalez and Redmond hitting next, Gonzalez has done nothing in the series, and Redmond's the pitcher, doesn't swing the bat quite as well as the opposing pitcher, Kerry Wood. Alex Gonzalez only two hits in 21 at bats in this series. He only has three hits in 37 at bats during the postseason. You saw Todd Hollinsworth standing in the on deck circle. Penny has been up a couple of times already. Check swing fouled out of play on two. Five pitches for the Cub right-hander. He will throw a 77th pitch. Still ahead of Gonzalez, 0-2. Talked about Gonzalez's struggles. That was probably the MVP of this Marlins club through the first half of the season. At career highs and home runs with 18 and RBIs with 77. That production has gone way, way down in this series. Still low and two on the Marlins shortstop. Wood allowed three of the first four batters in the game to reach base, including the three run home run by Cabrera. Only two have reached since. That ball lined into left field. I lose with a diving play. Three and a half 
in Chicago. 5-3, Cubbies in front. Sweet home, Chicago. It's Central on Fox. Welcome back to Wrigley Field in Chicago. Huge crowds gathered outside in Wrigleyville, as they call the neighborhood, along Clark and Addison. And then on the other corner, it's Sheffield and Waveland. Taking over now for Mark Redmond, the game two starter, Brad Penny. He's had a rough postseason. Rounded down to third, foul ball. They're going to get a look at Sheffield, which runs beyond the right field wall. Actually, a bigger crowd, it looks like, out there tonight than Waveland Avenue beyond the left field wall. It looks like on Waveland, they're blocking them off a little bit more than on Sheffield. It looks a little bit more like a party, a block party. Come on down. There's a Cubs game going on in October. One and two to count on Alex Gonzalez. Penny got the start in game two of this league championship series. Lasted two innings, allowed seven hits, seven runs. Josh Beckett coming off that complete game two hit shutout on Sunday afternoon now beginning to throw. Round ball to short. And Steve, there it is again. Gonzalez to Gonzalez. <laughs> Makes your job so easy. It really does. only difference is the age and the nickname. Seabass. Now, Leiter, you did a great deal of research. You brought it up last night how the Seabass nickname came about. Damian Miller digging in. Strike one. Well, Mr. Millar, apparently, uh, as Steve says, gives a lot of nicknames. And uh, we thought he was a fisherman, but it turns out where uh, he's got his game face on all the time. And Kevin Millar thought that Seabass was appropriate. Apparently, Seabass have a frown all the time. You're right. Now, while I talked to Kevin Millar after they originally shaved their heads after they got beat a couple of games by the Oakland A's in the divisional series, they had to change their luck. Millar was going for the mullet look first did the crew cut then shaved his head completely got the rest of the guys on the team to do it as well and Gina Millar Kevin's wife had a frown on her face when he came home from work too she had her game face on when she saw him second time around I don't think he nicknamed her Seabass I think she nicknamed yeah <laughs> there was probably a lot of nicknames flying around that day one two on Damian Miller breaking ball popped up Long run for Pierre, but he's there two away. Coming up this week, it's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader. First, Brett Favre and the Packers try and rebound from a heartbreaking loss when they take on Mark Bolger and the high-flying Rams. Then the Buccaneers trying to make it two in a row. Taking on the Niners or other regional action. Coverage begins Sunday at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. The biggest stories are in the NFC, and the NFC is on Fox. Wood sharply grounded. It looked like he got a piece of Penny's glove, and he goes to Castillo, and that'll end Give him an assist. Good, solid, perfect inning for Penny out of the bullpen. We're back after a break from your local Fox station. Top half of the fifth inning, game seven of this National League Championship Series. The Marlins jumped in front of Kerry Wood on a three-run home run by Miguel Cabrera in the opening inning. Well, the Cubs got three in the second inning, including a two-run home run by Wood. They took the lead on a two-run home run by Moise Salou. As mentioned, Terry Wood introducing the curveball. He didn't throw it in the third inning. If you see his grip, the, the curveball is about seven miles an hour slower than his slider. See his hand around it, you pull down more, and it's more of a 12 to six. He threw a curveball to Conine, and here's a curveball that stays on the inside part of the plate and locks him up. It's important that I see it because he's primarily been a fastball slider up to this point. And with the curveball, it's about 19 miles an hour slower than his fastball, where the slider's about 9 or 10. So the speed differentiation 
will get these guys off, especially if they haven't seen it prior to these last couple innings. Ryan Banks to pinch it for Brad Penny. And then we roll over to the top of the order, Josh Beckett. A complete game shutout in game five in Miami. And on two days rest, he will come on to pitch here in the bottom of the fifth inning. One and one to Brian Banks. I think the other thing to think about with the curveball and the fact that Kerry Wood has thrown him is that he had struggled with the location of the slider, a different pitch to throw for a strike. He's starting to throw that slider now better and better locations. Banks only one at bat in this series and 0 for 3 in the postseason. This could be a big change for the Marlins. Brad Penny had struggled in this series, but in that inning, got the Cubs out 1, 2, 3, but unfortunately the inning previous, the Florida Marlins went out 1, 2, 3, and that's why you have to have a pitch hitter right now because Brad Penny's spot was up in the order. If they could have gotten past his spot in the order, he might still be pitching in this game. Instead, now you have to bring Beckett in maybe earlier than you wanted to. Three and one to Banks. And Wood going to work. All four up and in. And the tying run will come to the plate here in the fifth inning. Now you've shown a, a lot of us and a lot of the folks that have been watching this series how to throw the various pitches. Talk about the curveball. Well, the curveball, the curveball is a little deeper in your hand, but the curveball is how it comes out of your hand. It usually starts behind and you pull down through the ball so that the pitch has bigger break and it, it basically drops more. A slider is more of a fastball and you turn your wrist, make sure your hand's behind the ball, you turn your wrist down through the ball, thus a fastball velocity almost and breaks late. Curveball starts behind your head, fastball in front. Pierre first pitch swinging after Banks had just drawn a walk. And Pierre retired one away. Let's see if we can get carried with behind. Yeah, this is a good pitch right here. Behind his back, you already have your hand cupped in or tucked. And by that, it's slower because you're choking it more and you get bigger break and also a better break, meaning from, say, a clock from 9 to 6. You hear that a lot. He's got a 9 to 6 curveball. And as a hitter, what you look for is elevation in the ball. Look for the ball to go up out of his hand. Here's his hand here. Here's the ball. On a fastball, the ball breaks, comes right out of his hand on a lower plane towards you. If you recognize pitches out of a pitcher's hand, you recognize elevation for a breaking ball. Ball one to Luis Castillo. It was very surprising to see Pierre come up there and first pitch hack in that at bat against Kerry Wood. Pierre has swung the bat very well against a Cub right here in the game here tonight, and clearly he's struggling with control in this fifth inning. He walked Banks on five pitches. He got a one pitch out with Pierre, and now 2-0 and on Castillo. And Pierre is more of a classic leadoff hitter, more so than a lot of leadoff hitters in the game today, and he is the kind of guy that you would think it's almost a no-no for him to ever swing at the first pitch. He can work the count and should every at-bat. And it's not like he's a guy that can't hit with two strikes. He had the triple down the right field line with two strikes his first time up. Castillo taking all the way at 2-0, and, oh, and it's a strike. They've been getting Castillo out by throwing him fastballs on the inner half of the plate and letting him just bounce balls to the shortstop. Up and in. Castillo to the deck. And it's three balls and a strike. This will scare you. Wow. That is a pitch that you literally hear buzzing by your ears as you're trying to get out of the way of it. And it's not a pretty sound. 3-1. And there's Frank. Beckett ready to go. Got his trusty bottle of water with him. Still three and two on Castillo. One on, one out here.
here in the Florida fifth inning. This will be the 91st pitch for Wood. Remember we showed you how shallow Moises Alou plays Castillo in left field. Doesn't think he can hit it over his head over there. Ball four, a pair of walks in the inning. And that will happen from time to time for Kerry Wood. He walked 100 batters this season in 211 innings. And now the Marlins knocking on the door with two on and one out in the heart of the order coming up. That at bat there was similar to Louis at bat in the eighth last night. He fought him, fought a couple of tough pitches. Good eye. Swung at the pitches that were over the plate and he worked the walk. That was a great at bat by Louis Castillo. Now Yvonne Rodriguez. Nine RBIs in the series, 15 in the postseason. Hammered down the left field line. It'll go to the warning track. Malou able to cut it off. One run scores are going to hold up Castillo on an RBI double by Rodriguez, who has a base hit in every postseason game this year. 16 runs batted in. A 5-4 Cub lead. Rodriguez sort of casts out and around this pitch, but it works out well for him. Not his classic inside-out swing. That's the breaking ball that you talked about, Al. Gets out in front of it and hooks the ball to the left. Moises Alou maybe saved a run here by this move right here. Getting onto the ground, stopping it. If that ball squeaks by him to the, to the outfield wall, the runner would score all the way from first base. That's Luis Castillo with good speed. How good has Yvonne Rodriguez been in this postseason with runners in scoring position in the division series against the Giants here in the LCS against the Cubs nine for 16 in those situations with 14 runs batted in. You know, anytime a pitcher leaves a slider or break them all this is a slider you see Miller setting up outside generally means your body's out in front and your arms behind you and you have to catch up in order to catch up you end up throwing it behind your head or casting it you hear that and as a result instead of being able to finish it you spin it and it stays on the inner part of the plate Miguel Cabrera down the strike get a look at the runners Banks easily scoring from second and Castillo easily getting to third Tying run at third, go ahead, run at second with one out. Rounded down to first, took a funny hop. Nice play by Caros, but Miguel Cabrera gets the job done. It's a 5-5 game. These Marlins are something. They just keep coming at you. Watch this hop. This ball will be pool cued, and watch it bounce back to the right of Caros. You see the spin on that ball. Anybody who knows anything about putting spin on a tennis ball can tell you about the way that ball bounced to Eric Carroll's. Stayed with it, made the play, but a run scored. Boy, in this inning with Castillo scoring, that was a huge walk. Castillo with no power, the guy that you have to go after and make him hit. A missile in the right center field off the bat of Derek Lee, and the Marlins have recaptured the lead at 6-5. Harry Wood has given up a 5-3 lead here in the fifth inning. Derek Lee starting to come to life on the fastball. Fastballs were beating him early in this series. Well, both games of this league championship series that Wood has started, the Cubs have gotten him a lead, and both times he has given the lead away. It came in the seventh inning of game three, the fifth inning, here in game seven. Oh, and one to Mike Lowell. Breaking ball stayed high. Kyle Farnsworth now begins to throw in the cup bullpen. Two walks by Kerry Wood here in the fifth inning. And both of the walks 
have come in to score. Now there's the slider. Where has that pitch been over this entire inning? Went to the curveball. It got hit. There's the slider, as you said, staying on top. You see the spin of that ball going away from Lowell. Unhittable. And yet he went to the curveball more in this inning, and that's what Rodriguez hit. Runner goes. Pitch taken away. Throw to second. They won't get Derek Lee. The Marlins have done this all year. When they get a lead, it's almost, it's not careless, but as a result of the lead, they, they don't care if they were to run themselves out of the game, unlike being down. Carey not paying that much attention. He's got two outs, two strikes on a hitter. He wants to make a good pitch. And now, Derek Lee's in scoring position. They're always on the attack. So many ways to beat you, so many. Derek Lee was a 30-20 guy on the season. Strike three called to low. That'll end the inning, but that's before the Marlins score three times. We go to the bottom of the fifth at game seven, and the Marlins lead by a run. Marlins with a 6-5 lead. This is exactly the kind of scenario Jack McKeon had in mind when he said Josh Beckett was available to come back on two days rest after that electrifying performance in game five. When Beckett threw a complete game two hit shutout, struck out 11 Chicago Cubs. Fly ball weakly hit into shallow center field. One away. Al Leiter, you have come back on short rest. That's exactly what Beckett is doing. A little longer than 48 hours after finishing off the Cubs on Sunday. Well, through a five-day rotation during the season, this would be his side day. And side day, some people throw for 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Some guys will just air it out for 25, 35 pitches. The, the way in which you see whether he's going to have his stuff would be his command. As to whether he's all over the place would determine as to whether he's feeling strong or not. But I can't imagine him being in there that long. How about velocity on the fastball? He was touching 100 miles an hour in his game five start. First fastball of the day to Lofton, 93. Well, you certainly get the feeling in spending any length of time at all with Josh Beckett that this young man is not afraid and he wants the ball. Came right out after game five and said, we're going to go to game six, we're going to win the game, we're going to go to game seven, and I'm going to pitch in game seven. He did one, make one youthful mistake in this city, however, after pitching the game five shutout. In the off day Monday, we were at dinner, and we found out that he had called and asked for a reservation for 10 in the name of Josh Beckett. The restaurant said, we don't have any room. Breaking ball away. And the wrong name to be thrown around this town after a five and the game five shutout that he threw. You don't stroll into Chicago and ask for dinner reservations. Yeah, this ain't South Beach. 2-2. Two -two. Breaking ball. To right field and Cabrera with a diving play and came up with it cleanly for the second out of the inning. The more you watch him, the more you like him. This kid is a flat-out athlete out there. Watch him dive. Let's see if he lands on his hands. That's a great play right there. Good shot for the youngsters. Watch him backhand the ball, then turn his hand over to land on it. If you hit your elbow there, you'll lose the ball. You must land on your hands when you dive for a ball. Now Sammy Sosa, of course, Beckett ran a fastball up and in on Sosa that Sammy didn't like, and he stings his ball into right center field. Cabrera going back, runs it down in front of the Ivy, and that'll end the inning. So Beckett retires his side in order. We play five in game seven. Marlin six, Chicago five. Order today and get a free three-room satellite TV system with free installation. That's right, satellite TV in three rooms of your home, free. Want more? Call and ask how you can get three free months of our most popular value pack with HBO and Cinemax. Call 1-800-WILD-DISH or visit Radio Shack, Sears, or a local participating retailer. 
It's the winning season for the Hyundai Sonata. Protected by America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles. Loaded with standard features like dual front side impact airbags. But the Sonata costs $2,100 less than a Toyota Camry LE when comparably equipped. And now get an extra $1,500 cash back. The Hyundai Sonata starting at just $14,539 after $1,500 cash back. You're the winner at the Hyundai winning season clearance. Going on now at your Hyundai dealer. Spicy garlic shrimp, fire grilled chicken, and our famous baby back ribs. Chili fajita trio. Want more flavor? Yeah. National League Championship Series Game 7 here at Wrigley Field in Chicago. A back and forth game thus far. Kerry Wood still on the mound, and it's strike one to Jeff Conine. The Marlins jumped in front, 3 0 in the first inning off Wood. The Cubs tied the game in the bottom of the second inning. An RBI ground out by Damian Miller, a two run home run by Kerry Wood. Moise Salou gave the Cubs a 5 3 lead with a two run homer in the third. Two walks, a double, a ground out, and a single. Scored three runs for the Marlins in the fifth. And that's where we stand here in the sixth, going two to Conan. I think it's important for Wood to have a low pitch count in this inning, and it's important for the Florida Marlins to be patient, foul pitches off, make him work. Their objective in this inning is to get Wood out of this game. Pitch number 104 coming up from Kerry Wood. Still 0-2 to Conine. Fouling pitches off. Conine very quietly has really had a nice series. He has nine hits and 22 at-bats. With a home run, three runs batted in. He's been on base twice tonight. He was on base twice last night at a sack fly RBI. Base hit center field. He's on for the third time in a game of night. Here is tonight's WebMD health report. A.J. Burnett. Boy, what a future he has. But out with a Tommy John surgery since the end of April. Corey Patterson, another enormously talented center fielder for the Cubs. Out with a torn knee since July. And Tony Womack, the former... Arizona Diamondback star of the World Series two years ago out with elbow surgery. Saw Remlinger headed for the Cub bullpen and begins to throw. Alex Gonzalez first pitch swing. Line ball to Kenny Lofton on the road. And Josh Beckett will back. That at bat will help Wood. Guy that you want to put the ball in play. Swings at the first pitch. Got to try to dispose of Beckett in about three pitches. Now, when you're talking about young pitchers, and certainly Josh Beckett, A.J. Burnett, among others, are very much the future of this Florida Marlins franchise. Beckett obviously wants the ball. He's going to take the ball. But are you risking hurting a pitcher by bringing them back in this kind of situation on two days rest? It all depends how many pitches he's, he throws and how many innings he's in. I, I, you look at it this way. You have to win tonight. I would, I would base it on how many pitches he's thrown, what he's accustomed to. He's mechanically sound. He's strong. He's young. I wouldn't abuse him with a lot of pitches, but I think it's all based on what you see and how it looks. Remember, if they, whoever loses here, they're not going to pick up a ball until sometime in February. You got a lot of rest. Larry Rothschild coming out to the mound. The, the, the same can be said about Mark Pryor and Kerry Wood. I mean, they have averaged the most pitches per start of any two pitchers in Major League Baseball. Kerry Wood, including this postseason now, over 4,000 pitches. Mark Pryor, third on that list. Again, it goes back to knowing your pitcher. Your pitching coach knows what he's all about. The training staff, his, his workout routine, how hard he works. How strong his legs are? Does he take care of his rotator cuff and everything else? Beckett puts down the bunt with foul. Two and one. 
Now, Tommy, you were talking about both of these staffs and how young they are. The Marlins actually have 84 wins from pitchers that are 30 years old or less. That's first in the major leagues. The Cubs are actually fifth on that list. It's a lot of wins from guys that aren't very old. Stabbed at it, missed it. Two and two. I think that number you just gave, Steve, would surprise a lot of people. If you walked around and most people and said, staffs 30 and younger starting staffs after Oakland, most would say the Cubs would be next in line. Not so. They would be wrong. Beckett gone on strikes. Six strikeouts tonight for Kerry Wood. He's walked four. Three of the four batters that he has walked tonight have scored. Well, this, you, you hear all the time as a pitcher, walks will kill you, and it's obvious in tonight. And you're just basically given a free runner. And with guys like Pierre and Castillo and their ability as a team, the Marlin team, to manufacture runs, go the other way, you play with fire, it's dangerous. Smoked into right field again on the first pitch by Juan Pierre. And making a turn and going to third. Conan is Sosa dropped the ball in right field. Mike Conan had made up his mind already that he was going to test Sosa. I don't think they'll score an error right there. I'm every bit as surprised as you are, Tom, that Pierre swung at that first pitch. Hits it in the right field. Conan's going to make that turn and go on to third. Sammy then bobbles the ball, gets it back in. No more harm done. I just really figured that would be an at-bat for Juan Pierre to get Wood out of this game and really build up some more pitches. Well, Wood is out of the worked game. anyway. Yep. Certainly a disappointing effort tonight by Kerry Wood. He is gone after five and two-thirds innings, trailing 6-5. Farnsworth comes on from the bullpen. Hey, man, remember how Ted was talking about his new acting job, but he was a little, um, hazy on the details? Right off here, baby. Well, ladies and gentlemen, say hello <laughs> to Pickle Boy. I'm so glad I got to see this. Happy to help. Picture mail that talks from Sprint. At Sprint stores, choose from a wide selection of picture phones starting at $99.99. Share it when it happens. Program in the first. Four dollars. Summer wind. Snacks in the fourth. Twenty-five dollars. From across the sea. A soda at the end of the seventh. Three dollars. It lingered there. Friday night. No TV. Touch your DVDs or video games. And walk with Priceless. Me. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's All Mastercard. Long, Devoted fan of Major League Baseball. Applebee's Take Two is back. Applebee's Take Two. The Take Two. Choose two of your favorite entrees for one mouth-watering plate. At a time when endless forms and phone calls can come between doctors and patients, one company is bringing them back together. WebMD. More than 250,000 physicians use WebMD to determine insurance coverage, write prescriptions electronically, locate charts, and settle claims with 1,100 health plans. In countless ways, WebMD is helping doctors and patients to reconnect, and in the process, helping to redefine modern medicine. WebMD. Modern medicine. The League Championship Series on Fox brought to you by Sprint, proudly offering picture mail and PCS Vision picture phones. By MasterCard, there are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. By Bristol-Myers Squibb Company, Hope Triumph and the Miracle of Medicine. And by WebMD, redefining modern medicine. 
top half of the sixth inning. The Marlins lead 6-5 in Game 7 of this National League Championship Series. And Kyle Farnsworth takes over on the mound for Kerry Wood. Farnsworth knocked around here last night. Ball one low and away. He came in, replacing Pryor in that eight-run eighth inning. Walked two batters intentionally, allowed a bases loaded, three-run double to Mike Mordecai, and then got charged with a run when Remlinger came on and allowed a run scoring single to Juan Pierre. Runner goes first to second. Off the glove of Barnesworth, everybody safe in the Marlins tack on a run. Castillo is second RBI of the series. Conine scores 7-5 Florida. Oh, this is a chance to be a double play ball if you let this ball go someone's covering second base or just get one out here with two outs someone's got to make that play Ozzie Guillen would tell you as a shortstop to let the ball go up the middle he didn't never like his pitcher catching the ball when it's back at him one of your middle infielders would get it this is a ball that's handleable just catch it and throw the guy out at first This is a huge moment in this ball game. I know we're only in the sixth inning, but you've got the Marlins' best run producer in the postseason already leading by two, coming to the plate with two on and two out. Now back out of play. Rodriguez in his career is two of five against Farnsworth with a home run. Castillo aboard with two away. Fouled out of play, and it's 0 and 2. Barnesworth, very much a power pitcher. Does he go fastball on the outside corner? That's flirting with trouble with Yvonne Rodriguez the way he's hitting this postseason. We'll see. He does and got him looking. The Marlins had a run, middle of a six, seven five, Florida. important messages reach out on the wireless service america trust at&t wireless the experts at oral b are on a mission to protect your teeth and gums with the new oral b professional care 7000 its unique 3d action cleans so deep it prevents and even reverses gum disease oral b professional care brush like a dentist have you discovered the secret of the big o Oversack.com. It's an online outlet, a department store where everything's always on sale. Save up to 70% on designer clothing, bedding, electronics, and diamond jewelry. Buy best selling books 25% below Amazon with $2.95 shipping and live operators 24 7. All waiting for you. So discover the secret of the big O. Oversack.com. Say aloha to a great new taste from Papa John's. 
Introducing two new pizzas with a zesty barbecue taste. Papa John's new barbecue chicken and bacon pizza. And our new Hawaiian barbecue chicken pizza with the added taste of juicy pineapple. Try Papa John's new barbecue chicken and bacon pizza or Hawaiian barbecue chicken pizza. Your choice, just $10.99. Call us now or order online at papajohns.com. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. I was running in the street in San Pedro, and now I am wake up in the major leagues. I play hard every day because this is the way that we play in my country. I never would dream that I would be playing the major league level. Playing regular fields like, wow, it's like another dream come true. I live for this. Watch the World Series on Fox beginning October 18th. Don't miss it. Game 7 of the National League Championship Series from Wrigley Field in Chicago. The Cubs led this series three games to one. Josh Beckett threw the complete game shutout in Game 5 to make it 3-2. The Marlins came up with an eight-run eighth inning rallying from behind to beat Mark Pryor in Game 6 last night, 8-3. And the Marlins lead 7-5. Alou Ramirez... And Caros up against Josh Beckett, his second inning out of the bullpen. Fly ball right field. Cabrera is there, one away. Let's take a look at our in-game box score for the Chicago Cubs, brought to you by AT&T Wireless. The two-run home run by Alou gave the Cubs a two-run lead in the third. They fell behind 3-0 until the bottom of the second, and Kerry Wood hit a two-run home run for the Marlins. Solid up and down the order. Seven hits, seven runs. The Marlins scored against Kerry Wood in his five and two-thirds inning. Only once all year did Kerry Wood allow seven runs in a game. The other time on the 4th of July in a loss to the St. Louis Cardinals. by Wood three of the four scored including two big ones in the fifth on the ground diving play by low to his feet has time two away I cannot overlook the defense that's being played by the Florida Marlins Lowell just a step and a half and then a dive gets up makes a play that takes away a hit Cabrera's defense in right field today has been outstanding all day long. <laughs> Defensively, this team for the Florida Marlins never beats itself. Carols. Check swing and a pitch in the dirt. One and one to Carols. This situation all series long. Dusty Baker has used Randall Simon to play first base against the right handers. Eric Carroll stays in the game to face Beckett in game seven. Party on a fastball as Carroll set fastball at 95. That's the first one that Beckett really cut loose. Well, if he keeps showing Jack McKeon that he's pitching the way he is, he, he threw a 95-mile-an-hour uh, fastball away to Ramirez, came back with a changeup to get the ground ball to Lowell. He went changeup, curveball, 95-mile-an-hour fastball here to Carroll. He's pitching. This guy's special. That fastball at 94 popped up in the foul ground and out of play. He learned an awful lot from that first game here when he came out just throwing all the fastballs. 
And now he's pitching. He's using all of his pitches, locating his fastball, throwing off-speed pitches and fastball counts. Very difficult for anybody to hit that. One, two to Carroll's. Fastball just off the corner. You take away the four runs Beckett allowed in the first inning of game one. He has only allowed two runs in his last 15 innings on the mound in this series. 2-2. Two, two. Out on a play. And how ironic it would be coming into a series where Pryor and Wood have gotten all the pub as being the top two young pitchers in the game today. They take away one bad inning, the first inning of this LCS, and Josh Beckett may turn out to be the best young pitcher in this series. Gone swinging Karos on a changeup, and that'll end the inning. 7-5 Florida back after a word from your local Fox station. is over. California. The summer's biggest sensation is back on a new night. You're sending me to a mental institution. The OC returns two weeks from tonight on Fox. Shields has got you covered with the exclusive Shields Advantage. Shields Auto Group in Rantoul and Paxton is covering you with our Shield Ceiling fans do more than just cool. They can help cut heating bills by circulating warm air in winter. Come to Menards for big savings on quality Hunter fans. This 52-inch Wellesley fan with light in four finishes is only $88. Give your floors the rich look and feel of carpet by Monticello. Interior dream or reminiscent plush carpet with a 10-year wear warranty are just 99 cents a square foot. For great carpet, head to Menards. Save big money at Menards. Champagne Telephone Company, your local Verizon Wireless authorized agent, is the largest cellular store in the area. The largest selection, lowest prices, most minutes, and best coverage. Their experienced and knowledgeable staff of experts will help you select the Verizon Wireless voice of data plan that suits your needs and your budget. For all your wireless needs, come to Champagne Telephone, the wireless expert you've always trusted. Get a thousand anytime mobile to mobile minutes. Call any Verizon Wireless customer nationwide. Plus unlimited nights and weekends on the America's Choice Network for $39.99 monthly access. Verizon Wireless, join in. The Hyundai Sonata, a comparison. More standard features than a Toyota Camry LE, including a V6 engine. And yet the Sonata costs $2,100 less when comparably equipped. Add in America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles, and you win. Test drive the Hyundai Sonata, starting at just $15,339. At your Hyundai dealer. Hurry into the Hyundai winning season clearance and get $1,500 cash back or 0% APR through October 31st. Inspired, creative, vibrant, unique. The wealth of decorating choices available at Arizona Tile Company goes not only above and beyond the floor, but above and beyond the ordinary. From Italy, Mexico, Spain, England, Germany, and the United States come Arizona Tile's exclusively original tile designs. Each choice is a work of art and uniquely yours. Arizona Tile, off Veterans Parkway on Mathers Road in Springfield to the World Series for the first time since 1945. But the Florida Marlins have other thoughts. They're trying to get back to the series. Since winning it back in 1997, just the fifth year after the franchise was born. Kyle Farnsworth on a relief of Kerry Wood. And a check swing by Miguel Cabrera down and away from him. One and one to Cabrera who has knocked in four of the seven Florida runs tonight. Of course, Al Leiter, when you were pitching for the Florida Marlins in 1997, that team, like this team, got into the playoffs as the wild card. Last season, both wildcard teams advanced to the World Series. And a chance for it to happen again this year should the Marlins in Boston advance. Two and two. 
And this wild card team, the Marlins, had four more wins than the Cubbies during the regular season. During the regular season, played in a tougher division. Out away by Cabrera. When Jack McKeon was hired, taking over the Marlins on the 11th of May, many in the baseball world, even those that knew about McKeon, and what a solid baseball man he has been for better than 52 years, laughed, saying, why would you hire McKeon at 72 years old to take over a very young Marlin team? Well, obviously, Larry Beinfest, the general manager, and Jeff Loria, the owner, knew what they were doing. When McKeon took over, they lost seven of their first ten games. After that, they had the best record in baseball from the end of May through the regular season. 30 games over 500. McKeon in his 52nd year in professional baseball is either a player, a manager, or a general manager. Managed in the minor leagues for 15 years. Another good at bat by Miguel Cabrera, still two and two. I think he's been brilliant through this whole thing. This whole golly gee shucks, why are we here? The mighty Cubs with Wood and Pryor and Everybody's got us ruled out, and we have nothing to lose, and all that. I think that is just a bunch of stuff that he wants to tell everybody else, but that Marlin team doesn't think that at all. Bouncer over the mound. Gonzalo's behind the mound. And just out at first. Cabrera thought he beat the throw by Gonzalo. And we talked to Jack McKeon about the pressure on his ball club, and here's what he had to say. There's no pressure as you know, we have to win. Uh, we've been in the underdog since we started. Uh, I think the guys relish on that uh, and it's being in that position. And uh, we feel that the pressure is going to turn over to the other club. Let them, they're the ones that have, they're the ones that are supposed to win. But on the other hand, these guys are tough and they're mentally tough and they're not going to give in and they're going to be up there proving that they can compete with anybody in the league. And, and basically, we have. McKeon is such a joy to just sit down and talk to. Knows so much about the game. Talked about all the various positions he's held in the game, including the general manager of the San Diego Padres for 11 years, including that trip to the NLCS in 1984 when his Padres beat the Cubs. 0 and 2 on Derek Lee. Later, Jack managed in Kansas City, Oakland, San Diego. Should have never been let go in Cincinnati. He did a superb job in the Queen City. Check swing. Did he go? No. Says Chuck Merrill. Tom, the way that uh, this pitch came in here, just slider off the outside part of the plate. Lee looks like he tried to offer and then hold back. The bat head never really came out to make an offer at that pitch. The way that Cabrera bounced out short to first was the same play that Farnsworth muffed in last inning and cost him an extra run. Lee going on strikes two away in the four to seven. Farnsworth pitched him great and all along this whole series they've been busting him up and in this is a fastball down and in the pitch that he hit last night but what set that up was he threw him slider 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 and he took a 0-1 slider right down the middle to me as a pitcher I see that I see say he's looking for fastball that was a great setup as a result of the three sliders prior to that pitch. 0-1 oh, to Mike Lowell will be keeping it here tonight for the seventh inning stretch and they've got a pro up here tonight singing take me out to the ball game Billy Corrigan platinum rock recording artist from the smashing pumpkins 
Billy corrects me, X. Smashing punch. 0 oh, 2 to Mike Wolf. But nonetheless, a big leaguer in the booth here tonight. <laughs> Steve, I can't believe they don't have you singing in game seven. I can. Breaking ball away, one and two to Lowell. Try the breaking ball down and away again, and the count even up. McKeon has made so many subtle and not so subtle moves throughout the course of this series, including putting Lowell back in the lineup, telling Miguel Cabrera, I need you to go from third to left to right after playing short your whole career, bringing Beckett back here tonight, choosing Pavano over Penny last night. Into right field, it will fall in front of Sosa, two out single by Lowell. Look at the location, they're trying to go away right there. That ball tails back out over the middle of the plate. Still don't understand why they don't try to bury Lowell inside with the hand injury. Makes it a lot tougher to get to a pitch in. They've stayed away from him, and he's hurt him. Credit to Law. That that is vintage Law. He get he got 0-2 behind. Farnsworth slider slider fought off the fastball inside. He's a great hitter. T to battle as as much as he did against Farnsworth, who throws as hard as he does, with good sliders, good hitters fight off the good pitcher's pitch to wait for that pitch that he hit. Larry Rothschild coming out. A lot of similarities between the stuff of Kyle Farnsworth and the stuff of Kerry Wood. And Jeff Conine had three excellent bats in this game against Kerry Wood. Singled in the second, walked in the fourth, singled and scored in the sixth. Dave Beers will begin to throw down in the Cup bullpen. Farnsworth spot due up third in the bottom of the seventh inning. Breaking ball in, 2-0. This big pitch coming up right here. Conan swinging the bat very, very well here in the last three games of this series. Breaking ball, and it's a good one. Two and one. Base hit in the center field. Back to back, two out singles for the Marlins off Farnsworth here in the seventh from Lowell and Conine. Already with a two-run lead, and Alex Gonzalez coming up. And that's going to do it for Farnsworth. Gonzalez with big-time numbers against Farnsworth in his career. It's a matchup Dusty Baker told us before the game he would try and avoid. 
So he'll summon Beers from the bullpen. Two on, two out in the seventh. The Marlins lead by two. Gina, check this out. I'm sitting next to your new boyfriend. Don't you just love your new boyfriend? I do love him. As long as you're happy. Picture mail that talks from Sprint. At Sprint stores, choose from a wide selection of picture phones starting at $99.99. Share it when it happens. Inside Fort Knox is $56 billion. Try to get in the door, they'll handcuff you on the spot. Inside AIG is over $600 billion. Try to get in the door, and we'll open it for you. Give you a cup of coffee, and loan you money to fix up your house. Consumer loans, insurance, retirement. AIG, we know money. Jared? What are you doing here? I don't know, I just always wanted to try this place. But Jared, it's okay. I had Subway for lunch. When you have wholesome, low-fat sandwiches from Subway, it's all right to indulge now and then. Try our delicious sweet onion chicken teriyaki sandwich, made fresh with under six grams of fat, so you can feel good about being good and okay about being bad. Some dessert, sir? Subway, good, so you don't always have to be. I've made a lot of news on the baseball diamonds, but if you want to find out about this diamond, you gotta go talk to your doctor. Ready to try Viagra for the first time? See your doctor and find out if a free sample is right for you. My doctor says it's right for me. That's why I stay with it. For more information, go to Viagra.com. The Marlins lead in the seventh inning, game seven of this National League Championship Series, seven to five. They have Mike Lowell at second base, Jeff Conan at first, and the new pitcher, Dave Beers. Beers has struggled in the postseason with that ERA up over 6.7. Gonzalez 0 for 10 in his career against Beers. Ball one inside. Alex 0 for 3 in the game tonight. Lined out to left field on a diving catch by Alou in the fourth. 2 for 23 in the series. Two and zero. Oh. Gonzalez is the type of hitter we told you before. 18 home runs on the season. A lot of those in the first half. That'll hit home runs against a guy like Beers, a guy that does not throw that hard. Beers has had trouble with hanging his split finger. Fastball in the low to mid 80s. Gonzalo's got a good pitch to hit right there at 2-0 and, oh and fouled it straight back. Now the Marlins have not had anybody getting loose in their bullpen. Josh Beckett waits on deck. There's the home run swing that he tried to go right there. Once again, Cub pitchers not finding their location. That ball was supposed to be away, and yet it was right down the middle. Two and two. Well, Beards get back into the at bat. You've got Beckett on deck. As Tom said, nobody's warming up. You got the pitcher who you have to assume can't hit. Even though he's 0 for 10, you still would like to think that you got a better shot against Beckett than you do a starting player. I throw something in the dirt here, get him chased. That split finger. Broken bat flare in the short left center field. Walton coming, dives, does not get it. Conine scores. They're going to wave around the next runner. It is Conine behind Roll, throw down to third. And Gonzalez is out. He slid by the bat. Two run score, and the Marlins open a 9 to 5 lead on a broken bat floater off the bat of Alex Gonzalez.
Hamilton with an outstanding effort right there. You got to try to dive for that ball. And on in to score. Dear Commissioner, Major League Baseball is great, but you know what would make it even more exciting? Instead of a warning track, how about a warning moat? His windup. Oh, he smacks a deep fly to center. Hayes is back to the moat. Uh, he's wet. Yeah, but did he hold on? Well, that's the question. He did. <laughs> Gator got him. <laughs> that's good fun. Oh, the fans love it. New juicy fruit grape melon. Cool. Ah! Wait, what are you doing, man? Fine, fine, fine. Sweet. Jackets. Gotta have twisted sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta have the twisted fruit combinations of new juicy fruit grape melon and shrapple berry. See anything? Hold up. Let go. Down. That's one way around holiday blackout days. The Capital One Miles One card is a better way. Fly any major airline anytime with no blackout dates. What's in your wallet? I know where you live! Starting today, your eyes can breathe easier. With night and day lenses, the most breathable soft contact lenses ever made. Night and day lenses, made from a revolutionary material that allows six times more oxygen into your eye than the leading soft lenses. So breathable, you can sleep in them. They're approved by the FDA for continuous wear for up to 30 nights and days. Not everyone can wear these lenses for 30 days. Risk of serious eye problems is greater for extended wear. Ask your doctor about breathable night and day lenses. In five days... You tell your son to keep his filthy hands off my daughter. Everything will be exposed. Skin premieres at 9, 8 central Monday on Fox. The League Championship Series on Fox, brought to you by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. It's game seven of the National League Championship Series. Alex Gonzalez, a fly ball to deep center, and Pierre is there against the Ivy. One pitch, one out for Josh Beckett, beginning his third inning out of the Florida bullpen. He is not allowed a base runner. The Cubs have stuck to their game plan of going up the middle and the other way. They just haven't been able to find gaps out there. Pierre has run down a few balls in center field. Cabrera run down more than a few balls in right field. Outstanding defense for the Marlins continues. Tom Goodwin to pinch hit for Damian Miller. First pitch fastball strike one from Beckett. Beckett, only 23 years young, out of Spring, Texas. The Marlins' first-round pick, the second pick overall in the June 99 draft. The USA Today High School Pitcher of the Year in 1999. That one out of play, and one and two on Tom Goodwin. You know, you hear about polished and complete pitchers that have it all. 
And aside from just a great arm and a great delivery, this kid at an early age learned how to pitch. Use all of his pitches. Right there was a perfect sequence. I mean, he's been doing it the whole time here, but he throws back-to-back change-ups to Goodwin while throwing still in the mid-90s. It just makes all of your other pitches that much better. And now is it safe to say that Beckett is out there with even a little less than his best stuff here, but still pitching. That fastball not rushing up there in the mid to upper 90s regularly as it did on Sunday in Miami. Hit 95 there. They appealed, and Mike Everett said he went around. Strike three. I don't know about that one, Tommy. Al, I don't know. You're a pitcher. You like to get the call. It didn't really break his wrist through there. The bat head was making no real effort to hit that ball. Well, especially the ball was inside. A lot of times, guys will commit, and then as a result of it being near their head or inside, they're just trying to get out of the way. Yeah. Swinging your hips out of the way to get out of the way of it. Not really moving your arms, but bringing the bat head with you. Troy O'Leary will pinch it for Dave Veers. Kyle Farnsworth in an inning allows three hits and two runs. Veers allows a big two-run double off the bat of Gonzalez after Wood gave up seven in five and two-thirds innings. 2-0. Two and oh. Farnsworth gave up three last night. Beers and Remlinger allowed runs in game five. It's not been a good series for the Chicago Cup bullpen. Two one to O'Leary. Two and two. The frustration and the disappointment in this ballpark and in this city from the eighth inning on here last night through the night into the morning all day today. The anticipation starting for game seven feeling as though you can come back and forget all about what happened here in game six. The Cubs fell behind in the first inning tonight, three nothing, tied the game, took the lead, but the Marlins have scored six times in the last three innings. And now Long faces again. In the right field, hit pretty well, Cabrera at the wall, goodbye. Hit home run makes it a three-run ball game. O'Leary, low ball hitter, dropping the head of the bat down through the hitting zone. That ball tried to tail away from him from Beckett, couldn't get it to the corner. Strike to Lawton. I mean, when you look at the way this series is playing out, the Cubs are trying to make a run back into this one now 9 6. Off the end of the bat, line ball on the right. The here is there to end the inning. A solo home run off the bench by Troy O'Leary. We go to the eighth. 9 6. Florida. your sister you were uh, this november can you track him yeah he can track him how far would you go to get back what you've lost go home you understand you have to kill me first tommy lee jones kate blanchett from director ron howard this ain't rated r starts november 19th in new york and la opens everywhere november 26th come on lads 
call yourself soccer players? You're a bunch of idiots. Five nil, it's only half time. Yeah, 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 easy, coach. Uh, you know what's amazing? Yeah, talent, commitment, skill. No, 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 that's not it. Our defense is great, uh, but we have a no winger. Professor, tutori, maestro, you must listen to me. Speak English. We need the winger. Look here. Before the second half, we'll all drink Red Bull energy drink. Why? Because it gives you wings. Where'd he go? way to clean teeth? The dentist. What do thousands use? Same thing Arm & Hammer Complete Care does. Dental baking soda. Deep clean stains regular toothpaste can't reach. Cleans, whitens, freshens. Try new Complete Care. Your whole mouth will feel fresh from the dentist clean. lead 9-6 as they bat in the top of the eighth inning here in game seven of this National League Championship Series. And now the fourth pitcher brought on by Dusty Baker is left-hander Mike Remlinger. A new battery made as well. Paul Baco takes over behind the plate for Damian Miller. Josh Beckett stays in the game. Beckett has thrown three innings out of the Florida bullpen, allowed only one base hit, the solo home run to O'Leary, and has only thrown 36 pitches in his three innings out of the pen. Now, if this series stays the way it is and the Florida Marlins go on to the World Series as the representatives of National League, the game to me that really was forgotten is the game that Beckett threw, game five. The Cubs were up three games to one in the series. It seemed like there was an air of it's okay if we lose one because we go back to Chicago and we have Pryor and Wood. This team has shown its resilience all series long. They've come back to win every postseason game that they've won. Every postseason game except the Beckett game of game five where it was a shutout. And it's like People forget about that game. Very, very important game for the Marlins to turn things around when things were headed south very quickly. And then he's back in there in tonight's ball game. And making Remlinger work. Getting on board, let's take a look at our game summary. Kerry Wood, five and two thirds innings, allowed seven hits, seven runs, walked four, three of the four walks scored. An all time postseason record for home runs in a series, 23 of them. Miguel Cabrera, an LCS rookie record with three home runs. Kerry Wood, the first pitcher to hit a home run since Rick Sutcliffe in 84. The 
Cabrera's done a little bit of everything here tonight, not only at the plate with four runs batted in, but has made some solid plays out and right. We talked about Pierre and Castillo this entire series and having faced these guys 19 times with the Mets. Again, four of their eight at-bats, they were on base, they scored twice. These two guys are more than just a catalyst of what they can do with the bat, also what they do at first base. They put so much attention for the pitcher to think about what he needs to do to keep them close so they get them out of scoring position. And many times, even though they're, they don't steal a base, it gives the, the next batter, Pudge or Lee or Cabrera, a better pitch to hit. So much goes into that. Speed really does kill. Diving play by Gonzalez to take a hit away from Juan Pierre. Uh, we've seen some great defense on both sides of these teams. Full extension from Gonzalez coming down with the ball. Once again, landed on the hands. Pierre smelling a base hit and a possible double if that ball gets in the gap. And it's stolen from him right there. Remlinger faces two batters, retires both batters. And Joe Borowski, the cut closer, will come on from the bullpen. It's Ashley's 10th birthday. I think he wants it back. Stay. Gotta have Twisted Sweet. Gotta have the Twisted Fruit combinations of new Juicy Fruit, Graper Melon, and Strappleberry. No, it's my Juicy Fruit. What are people saying about Wendy's new home-style chicken strips? Big pieces of breast filet with your choice of three delicious dipping sauces? Nice. We're getting raves. Wendy's, it's better here. We didn't just give the new Ford F-150 more horsepower. We gave it the most low-end torque. Why did we push farther than anyone else? So you could do more than anyone else. Only this truck earned the right to be the next F-150. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. Buy The Matrix Reloaded on DVD. Action. With special features that show how the Matrix phenomenon came to life. Huh. Upgrades. The Matrix Reloaded. Buy it now on DVD. Fox Monday, a real American cowboy with a fake American fortune is going to take the women of Europe for a little ride. He's rich. But can he rein in the crazy Swede? The kill off the competition. The saucy Italian. I'm sure I'm going to like his lifestyle. Or the German that all the other girls hate. She's a snake. And she's got to go. <laughs> Maybe the other girls are a bit jealous. The next Joe Millionaire, an international affair, premieres at 8, 7 central, Fox Monday. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Commissioner of Baseball. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Two down in the Florida Marlins, eighth inning. Nobody on. And the Marlins in front, nine to six, as Joe Borowski, the Cubs' closer, takes over to face Luis Castillo. You know, Tom, I think one of the things we've talked about when this series opened, with all the four teams remaining in the playoffs, I really thought that the Florida Marlin team may be the most complete ball club of all of the four. Good speed at the top of the lineup, decent power and gap power in the middle of the lineup. Two different closers where a lot of people thought that might be a disadvantage. And Jack McKeon has used it as an advantage in this series, going to both Urbina and Looper at different times. Starting pitching that can dominate at times, and yet only one win in this series from any starting pitcher on the Marlins staff. Ground 
Bowl at Resolonic, and that'll do it in the Florida eighth. Big bottom of the eighth coming up for Chicago. Resolonic, Sosa, and Alou against Beckett. The Cubs down three. You want the job? I want the job. 90K. 180. 100. 170. 110. 160. 120. 150. 120. 140. 120. Bonus? No bonus. Done. One of the beautiful things about women is they don't sweat or smile like a guy. Our body chemistry is just different. Introducing Arm & Hammer Ultramax Antiperspirant Gel. It's made for a man's body chemistry. Ultramax stops odor at the source. So strong. Tests show it offers superior odor protection versus the leading gel at 8, 12, even 24 hours. It's all the muscle a man needs. New Arm & Hammer Ultramax Gel. This is what modern medicine was supposed to be about. Attending to patients not to endless forms and phone calls. Now, a single company is providing information and services that simplify healthcare for more than 250,000 doctors and 75 million patients. WebMD. With WebMD, insurance coverage can be determined instantly. Charts can be accessed anywhere. Results reported, prescriptions written electronically, and claims settled with 1,100 health plans. And with WebMD, physicians can continue their medical education, even attend conferences from home, and patients can monitor their own progress as never before. At a time when the healthcare system can come between doctors and patients, WebMD is helping them to reconnect, and in the process, helping to redefine modern medicine. WebMD, modern medicine. Championship Series on Fox, brought to you by WebMD, redefining modern medicine by Nextel. Nextel's digital walkie-talkie feature now works coast to coast. By Kill Bill, the number one movie in America, now playing in theaters everywhere, rated R. And by Papa John's Pizza, better ingredients, better pizza. Sold out Wrigley Field in Chicago for Game 7 of this National League Championship Series in the heart of the order coming up against Josh Beckett. Marlins lead 9-6. Beckett has retired 9 of the 10 batters he's faced, allowing only one base hit to an Oda Grezolani. From the looks of the way Urbina's warming up, he's got the ninth. Fox is probably going to carry behind Beckett here. His pitch count is pretty high. I can't imagine him going much longer than this. Two and one. I think Beckett goes as long as until somebody gets on base. Saw Jack McKeon waving his hand as if to say, come on, get him going down there. Fly ball, straight away center field. Pierre racing back at the track. Got it. How many times have we seen that in this ball game? Five or six balls hit to the warning track to the opposite field. A lot of Cub hitters that just quite didn't get enough of the ball to get it either off the wall or out of the park in that opposite field gap. Beckett's up to his 40th pitch, and I would say if this was his side day, obviously the intensity and mindset and everything else is a lot more than just throwing aside. I can't imagine him being ready if the Marlins were to go on to the World Series for Saturday. I, I don't see him as a Saturday starter based on all this work. It was a three-run lead last night for the Cubs. There was one out and nobody on in the Florida eighth inning. The Cubs were five outs away from going to the World Series. Now the Cubs with five outs to play with in the eighth inning.
Josh Beckett turning into the pitching star of this series. Swing and a miss by Sosa, two and two. He's only allowed three runs in his last 17 innings of work. That's a great spot right there. If you saw the 2-1 fastball, he said, here, Sammy, hit it. With a three-run lead, you can do that. He's got the luxury. Did it again. Got him looking. Strike three. Boy, this kid is something. Now, if he just abused Sammy Sosa right there on that at-bat. First pitch, fastball down. He missed. Came back away. Now Sammy's licking his chops. Goes up and in. Can't catch up. Right back in there, doubling up. And then paint on the outside corner. Threw him nothing but fastballs and said, let's go. Moise Salou, one of three in the game, at a two-run home run back in the Cub third inning that gave the Cubs a 5-3 to three lead. And how about Josh Beckett, the 23-year-old coming back on two days rest, four innings out of the bullpen, only one hit. We go to the ninth, 9-6, Marlins in front. Let's see, I bought yellow pencils, yellow post-it notes, yellow boxers, yellow boxers. $14. Land Courier, Air Courier, Pedicure, Reaper. $137. Two printers, two scanners, two tutus. $540. <laughs> Keeping business expenses separate from personal expenses? Priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Apply online for the MasterCard business card. When Taco Bell first created the Zesty Chicken Bowl, we thought we'd freshly prepare them right at your table. We still freshly prepare them, just not at your table. The Zesty Chicken Bowl. Tender slices of grilled all-white meat chicken, seasoned rice, three cheeses, crisp lettuce, and fiesta salsa. Made right when you order it, so it tastes even better. For fresh-made taste, think outside the bun. Hey, Dad. Uh, can I borrow your car? Suddenly, you have one more driver than you have cars. Now, your state farm agent can help with information on auto loans and leases, as well as competitive rates on auto insurance. Talk to your agent today. We live where you live. Why don't you take your mother's car? If you suffer from heartburn two or more days a week, what's in this box could make you change your heartburn medicine. Introducing Prilosec OTC. One pill a day can relieve frequent heartburn for 24 hours. You can get zero heartburn all day and all night. There's nothing else like it, OTC. Not the other heartburn medicines you take when you think you're going to hurt, but the ones you take after the pain's already started. This is truly different. It was the world's number one selling prescription medicine. And now, for the first time, it's available over the counter, right in your store. If you've been suffering from frequent heartburn, that can change when you change to this. New Prilosec OTC. One pill a day, 24 hours, zero heartburn. Time to take a look at our results from our Sprint Virtual Manager question. You logged in and logged on. Can the Cubs rebound tonight? 74% of you said yes, they can. If they're going to do so, it'll have to be in the bottom of the ninth inning. Last season in the World Series, Dusty Baker, San Francisco Giants. Had a three games to two lead against the Anaheim Angels. And that faithful eighth inning on the Scott Spezio home run turned the entire series around. Anaheim went on to win the seventh game and win the World Series. Dusty Baker's club in this series led three games to one. Beckett shut him out game five in Florida on Sunday. They had Pryor and Wood coming back to Chicago with a 3-2 lead. Devon Rodriguez, a fly ball into right field, will chase Sosa to the track, one away. If you weren't with us earlier, we mentioned that Pryor and Wood pitching on back-to-back -back days had not lost back-to-back -back games since last summer. 
during the Windy City Series against the Chicago White Sox. They had not lost back-to-back -back starts this year all year. Breyer got beat last night. Right now, Wood in line for a Game 7 loss. Miguel Cabrera. One hit in the game, but the 20-year-old Venezuelan with four runs batted in. It's interesting to note that since 1995, with the advent of the wild card, only one time has the team with the best record in baseball won the World Series the 1998 Yankees. Two wild card teams have won the World Series since 1995. The Marlins of 97, the Angels last year. Dusty Baker knows all about that 1997 Florida Marlins team. Dusty was managing the San Francisco Giants that season. The Marlins played the Giants in the opening round of the division series and swept them three in a row. But that was just the first step of that Florida Marlins club advancing onto the World Series, colliding with the high-octane offense of the Cleveland Indians. Led by Kevin Brown and Al Leiter on the mound. And of course they won that seventh and decisive game in the 97 series. Up and into Miguel Cabrera. And this kid gives you a good at bat every time he steps up there. 20 years old. Sosa two away in that game seven. Craig Council the sack fly to tie the game. And then the Marlins won it in the 11th inning. Edgar Renteria scoring Council. And the celebration was on in South Florida. Al, I'm sure you remember that as though it were yesterday. I, I was just sit, watching that. What a moment. It's, it's what we all dream about as Major League Baseball players. And, well, if the score holds up, the Marlins have another opportunity to do the same thing. What a thrill. Jeffrey Loria, the former owner of the Montreal Expos. Such a roundabout way how Loria became the chairman and CEO of the Florida Marlins. Of course, the Expos sold to Major League Baseball. John Henry, the former owner of the Marlins, bought the Boston Red Sox. And then Loria bought the Marlins from John Henry. And how strange it would be indeed should the Florida Marlins play the Boston Red Sox in the World Series. We get Thurbina ready in the Marlin bullpen. Only a three-run ball game. I want to give this opportunity to thank you guys, Tom, Steve, Fox, for allowing me to come into your world. It's been our pleasure, my friend. I am so grateful, appreciative. I was awfully nervous that first game, but you all made it so, so enjoyable for me. Thank you. We've been honored to have you. That ball smoked into right field. It'll fall and go to the wall. Derek Lee has turned around his postseason here in the last couple of ball games. The big two-run double in the eight-run eighth inning last night. And Derek Lee, two hits in an RBI here in game seven tonight. Mm -hmm. 
Now Mike Lowell. One of four, Singleton scored in the seventh. And all along we talked, or we were hearing that uh, the Cubs pitchers were feeling that Lowell was behind on the fastball. The more he gets these at-bats, he's getting better and better. He's turning on some fastballs. In the air, short center field, and Lofton comes on. We head for the bottom of the ninth inning. The Chicago Cubs have not been in the World Series in 58 years. They're trying to change that in their final at-bat against Urbina. Painters pants at a price that really turns heads, starting at just twenty dollars for men. I really wanted a new TV, you know, one of those big ones. So I turned to my Rena Center again. I love their flexible payment options. That way, I get to pay them when I get paid, and I'll be owning this Philips widescreen in no time. My friends, my stuff, my Rent-A-Center. Mention this ad and get one week free at Rent-A-Center. Call 1-800-205-2005 to connect with the store near you and ask for one week free. Maybe I, I don't own a fancy building or a big shipping department yet. But Brown still takes my business seriously. I can print labels, track shipments, order a pickup right from here. And with the time I save, I can build my business. Maybe I'm not exactly part of the limousine set. But I have a driver. Small business shipping. Synchronized. UPS. What can Brown do for you? In two weeks, the funniest place on Earth is... Wisconsin? Okay, Wisconsin. From that 70s show... I may need you to lotion me up. To a minute with Stan Hooper. I'm America's every man. Every man relates to me. I don't. Find your laughs. May I ask why you're wearing my daughter's blouse? In the strangest places. Sorry to barge in. You always barge in. And this time I'm sorry. It all starts two weeks from tonight on Fox. The wait. I would never do anything to hurt Marissa. Is over. California. The summer's biggest sensation is back on a new night. You're sending me to a mental institution. The OC returns two weeks from tonight on Fox. Inning game seven of this National League Championship Series. The Florida Marlins with a 9 6 lead. And Jack McKeon will hand it over to right hander Uget Urbina out of the bullpen. Juan Encarnacion will take over in right field for Miguel Cabrera. The Marlins trying to come back, trailing three games to one in this National League Championship Series and trying to win three straight to eliminate the Cubs. Ball one to Ramirez. Carroll's to follow, although Randall Simon stands in the on-deck circle to bat for him. And there's strike. Urbina's only made one bad pitch in the series. That was in the bottom of the ninth inning of game one when he hung a breaking ball that Sammy Sosa hit deep into the ninth for a game-tying home run. Other than that, he has been mighty good. One and two on Ramirez. Last night, Urbina threw 16 pitches, two innings with two strikeouts. Game seven, NLCS. It doesn't matter. Looper just in case. Two and two. Should the Cubs lose this game, it is absolutely impossible to try and describe the disappointment that there will be in this city and its fans all across the country. Eliminating the Atlanta Braves in the division series, their first postseason series win. 
since advancing on to the 1945 World Series. And then jumping all over the Marlins, winning three in a row after losing the first game. On the other side of the ledger, it's probably indescribable to tell the feelings of Jack McKeon, the oldest big league manager to reach the postseason for the first time. In 72 years, 10 months, he's nearly 10 years older than the previous holder, Bert Schott who was 62 years old in 1947 with the Brooklyn Dodgers. Two and two to Ramirez. Marlins have never lost an elimination game. Two and zero oh in this postseason. Games five and six, and of course the 97. Elimination game in the World Series against Cleveland. Two, two, three, and two. It is remarkable here. Ten-year history with this franchise, the Florida Marlins, on the verge of going to their second World Series, and the Cubbies are waiting 58 years. It's kind of like when you're a rookie and you get the taste of postseason first year, and you think it's going to happen every year. I don't know. If this organization realizes how special it truly is. And that one thrown behind Ramirez. And he will reach to begin the bottom of the ninth inning. Cubby's still breathing life as Randall Simon will come to the plate with one on and nobody out. Well, the walks have hurt the Cubs. The leadoff walk in the ninth. Certainly not what Urbina wants to do. With a three run lead. Randall Simon to bat for Eric Carroll's. Swing and a miss, pulled the string on him with a changeup. 0 and 1 to Simon, who had the big home run in game three at Pro Player Stadium. Taking Kerry Wood off the hook in that game after Wood had allowed the Marlins to take the lead in the seventh inning. In the eighth inning against Chad Fox, Randall Simon gave the Cubs a temporary one-run lead. Marlins tied the game in the bottom of the eighth inning, and the Cubs won it in the 11th. Did he go around the appeal? It's still waiting. Apparently, the home plate umpire, Jerry Crawford, said, no, it's my call. He didn't go around. Simon, a free swinger. He's seen three changeups in a row. Two he swung at. Rabina's trying to have him chase there with a changeup off the plate. One on, nobody out here in the Cub ninth inning. Down three. Chased it again, and he's gone. Four straight changeups, and Simon made an attempt to swing at each and every one of them. You throw it in the air, he's going to swing at it. That was a great pitch by Urbina. Change up, change up, change up. The idea, start over the plate and expand. That was textbook right there by Urbina. Now Alex Gonzalez. One of three, doubled and scored in the second inning. Gonzalez has three home runs in this series. He's 0 for 4 in his career against Urbina. It's an entirely different kind of frustration, and certainly the length pales in comparison. But Al, you brought it up earlier about this Florida Marlin franchise having a chance to go to the World Series for the second time in 10 years. But there has to be enormous frustration with a lot of the Marlin fans after what took place at the end of that 97 celebration. Because no sooner had the champagne dried, Wayne Heisinga 
then the owner of the franchise completely dismantled the team, breaking the hearts of so many that it jumped on board to root on the Florida Marlins. And you lose your fan base. How, how do you blame a local fan base? They averaged 16,200 fans this year. That was a big backbreaker. You win the World Series and everybody's excited and you've dismantled the team completely. Can't blame the fans. Not at all. Gone swinging Alex Gonzalez and the Cubs are down to their final out. get Urbina trying to nail it down one out to go after championships the first set of numbers 0 0 that changed because they clinched the Central Division this year they've waited 58 years to win a National League pennant the third number 95 the number of years they have waited to go and win a World Series the stars were aligned for the Cubs to erase that 58 with a three games to one lead. But Beckett and the Marlins shut out the Cubs in game five. They scored eight runs in an improbable eighth inning last night to beat Mark Pryor. In the air left field. And the Florida Marlins have come back from three games to one down to win the National League pennant. The Florida Marlins, for the second time, are going to the World Series. What an amazing story. The Marlins won it all in 1997. We mentioned earlier, from the end of May, through all of June, July, August, and September. Jack McKeon's team had the best record of any team in Major League Baseball. To some, this is a surprise. To many in the National League, this comes as no surprise. Improbable, albeit, after being down 3-1. It's certainly not a surprise for me, having been with the Mets this year. They beat us 12 out of 7. The Braves, they beat the Braves head to head. This is a very good team. We've been talking about how they can beat in so many different ways. I'm not surprised. And congratulations to the Florida Marlins and their manager. One of the most likable people that has ever put on a major league uniform, Jack McKeon. Managing in the postseason for the first time in his career. And now a trip to the Fall Classic. Josh Beckett comes off two days rest, goes four innings out of the bullpen, allows only one hit and one run. And they beat two of the top pitchers in all the baseball in consecutive games on the opposition's home field. Prior last night, Kerry Wood tonight. Jack McCann, he made all the right decisions, it seemed. Every move he made worked. These guys, he kept saying there was no quit. Great group of guys. They pulled for each other. They had bench jockeys. They had name tags at home at Pro Player Stadium where they sat. Everybody pulled for one another. Jeff Loria thrilled. He should be. Here's a guy who could have sat on his wallet, went out and get, got Jeff Conine and Urbina, brought in a Lenny Harris who's respected around baseball with a core group of guys that great players. Let's send it downstairs to Josh Lewin. With Josh Beckett, four innings of one base runner allowed, and that's it. You did it on two days rest, and you predicted, Josh, that it would happen. We talked to you after game five. You said you'd set it up for Oogie to close it. That's exactly what happened. That's what happened. You know, like I guess I got lucky calling it. You know, we just, uh, this team sticks together, and we all believe in one another. It doesn't matter who does it. You know, we're just, we're just happy, man. We're going to the World Series. I, it hasn't even really sat in yet. It really hasn't. It was an incredibly tall order to come in here, beat Pryor, beat Wood. You did it. Yeah, those, those are two tough guys to beat. I'll tell you what, Pryor pitched a great game yesterday, and 
you know, we just, you know, we got lucky, you know, we got caught a break and, you know, th things work out for a reason, I guess. Go soak it up. Congratulations. Thank you very much. All right. The Marlins go. Let's go back upstairs. Josh Lewin, thank you very much. Steve Lyons is standing by in the Florida Marlins clubhouse. We'll have the trophy presentation and name the series MVP. From the moment they met, they knew it was meant to be. I can't believe you're stealing your boyfriend's car. He's not my boyfriend. Does he know that? He does now. <laughs> the only thing they didn't expect... His father is the district attorney. He wants to destroy my business. ...was life getting in the way. If the press gets a hold of this, they would ruin me. They would ruin you. Fox presents the tale of two families divided by ambition. Why does it matter who our parents are? And joined by love. When I'm with her, I just feel so good. It's unbelievable. This has to stop. You cannot see this girl again, ever. You tell your son to keep his filthy hands off my daughter. Let's take him down. You can't tell me not to see him! The rich man's dead. What have I done? From executive producer Jerry Bruckheimer. I love you, Adam. I love you, too. Skin premieres at 9, 8 central Monday on Fox. Let's go! Sunday on America's number one pregame show. You'll never guess how Tampa Bay Bucks star Simeon Rice spends his day off. Pam Oliver gets the inside scoop. Fox NFL Sunday, New Eastern, 9 Pacific. I love my job because I get to work with people. I totally consider my clients friends. I appreciate it when they actually ask me over for dinner. I feel if you don't know a person personally, then how do you know what insurance they're really going to need? We are real people. We all have the same goals. We have the same ambitions. I some of the same fears. We definitely think of the client in personal terms. When they trust you and they like you and you've helped them, it makes me feel great. <laughs> this is my country. Call me anytime. Shields has got you covered with the exclusive Shields Advantage. Shields Auto Group in Rantoul and Paxton is covering you with our Shield of Protection. A three-year, 75,000-mile powertrain warranty on any pre-owned vehicle, 98 or newer, with less than 60,000 miles. Shields Auto Group is even offering this warranty at no charge to you. And it's transferable, renewable, and extendable. Head on over to Shields Auto Group in Rantoul and Paxton and experience our Shield of Protection. Shields Auto Group. Jack McKeon and the Florida Marlins celebrate a 4-3 series win in this National League Championship Series and heartbreak all over Chicago after the Cubs let a 3-1 series lead slip away. You had to see it to believe it. And many of you saw it. This Marlin team out looked dead in the water, to be quite honest about it, when they fell behind three games to one. The one game they won was in game one here in extra innings. They had the heartbreaking loss in game three down at Pro Player Stadium. Let's send it downstairs for the trophy presentation. Here's Steve Lyons. All right, Tom, thank you very much. Kind of a wild clubhouse, a small clubhouse, small podium down here in the locker room of the Florida Marlins. Joined with me right now, the uh, honorary National League president, Bill Giles the CEO and managing general partner of the Florida Marlins, Jeffrey Loria, the president of the team, David Sampson, Larry Beinfest, the general manager, and of course, the manager, Jeff, uh, Jack McKeon down there all the way at the end. I think you've got some hardware to give away, don't you? I sure do. Uh, Jeffrey, wonderful league series. You guys played terrific. You showed great character after being down three to one to come back. <laughs> Honey, what is it? Stuffed crepes at IHOP. Right now at IHOP, it's new stuffed crepes. Tender crepes filled three delicious ways. Grilled ham and Swiss, bacon and cheddar, and supreme. Served with our famous pancakes or hash browns, starting at just $4.99. Stuffed crepes at IHOP. It's the stuff dreams are made of. IHOP. Come hungry, leave happy. It's our 50th anniversary, and we're having an open house. Sunday, October 26th, from noon to 4, you're invited to tour the studio and meet the on-air personalities. Admission is two cans of food to kick off the Eastern Illinois...